Hey guys, it's Derek from Pacific Coast Auto here in Japan, and we're looking here at a Honda Odyssey. This one is a third generation Odyssey, or an RB1 slash RB2. This one here is an RB1, meaning it's the front wheel drive. Uh, RB2 is the four wheel drive, and this is the absolute engine, engine version of it, meaning the 2.4 liter, 200 PS, so 190 seven horsepower 196 horsepower version um, through front wheel drive you can get the absolute with the four wheel drive but then you get 190 ps instead of 200 and then you also get the weight of the four wheel drive system this is one of my favorite vehicles of all time i know it's a weird pick to be a favorite of all time but it is the odyssey in canada is a minivan and this one is somewhat between a minivan and a station wagon and i'm a huge fan of station wagons and so I'm a big fan of this. Plus with the 2.4 liter, 200 horsepower-ish engine, you get a nice peppy, but also fuel efficient engine. You get the same economy in this as you do out of the 160 horsepower engine that came in the previous generation of the Odyssey, plus much better looks. And here in Japan, these are commonly equipped with, you know, 20 inch wheels lowered down really low. And so there's a big tuner community that makes these cars look very sweet, in my opinion. So, bought from auction, this one's going to Canada. It's a brand new import to Canada, and so I think a few people are interested in buying them these days. We have two of them at the moment. One more over there that just came in. Okay, so let's take a look at this. The uh, coolant and the oil both look to be fine. I also checked the transmission fluid, and it doesn't have any issues. Uh, only available in automatic transmission, but there is self-select gear mode for the transmission, so you can run it a little bit more sporty if you want to. I think as far as minivans go, this is about as sporty as you get because of the low roof line. And seven seats in this. Plus the, the third row is a stow and go seat, which is kind of cool at the same time. This was on my short list of minivans to buy when it came time for me to dad up and buy a minivan. And I chose to go with Honda's larger one, the Elysian, that didn't come out until I guess this year, but a few more months later, or maybe now, I don't know. But the reason why was because this one, uh, although I prefer this one in terms of looks, fuel efficiency, driving dynamics, uh, this one has a uh, third row seat that is harder to get into and with three kids and two, three car seats, three at that time, this one's just a little bit more difficult to manage on an everyday life. If you have kids out of car seats, then uh, no issue there. And so I might, I might get one of these one day. I like them very much. Okay, so let's go over the auction inspection sheet and then around the vehicle and then interior and I'll show you the, the seats in the back and a couple of neat little features. So it's a 2003 Odyssey. Um, this is the Absolute. They have a 160 horsepower version and 200 horsepower or, or PS, you know, the conversions not one to one. Um, it's like 98 point something to one. 2.4 liter engine. They both come with 2.4 liter engines, so be careful about that. Just one of them is more powerful. And like a lot of uh, Japanese engines, you get the power higher up in the RPM band, and so you have to run it pretty hard in order to get the extra power. <clears throat> My personal vehicle is the Elysian has a 3 liter V6 with 250 horsepower, and that one's very torquey. This one here is low torque, high RPM. And so a little bit different for, for a van, but if you're comfortable with driving a little bit harder, a little bit higher RPM and shifting your own gears, you can get a lot of good performance out of it if you want to. 96, 870 kilometers, so by the Japanese market a little bit higher, but these are minivans and they're owned by people who drive them more often and so you're going to see higher mileage on average compared to sports cars or other types of cars here in Japan. Auction rate 4, interior C, exterior B, and then seat wear, interior dirty, underside surface rust, and exterior has shallow scratches in various areas. And then this was a no reserve car at auction, which is a little bit weird. Body has minor scratches. A1 is basically a scratch that you can buff out. And I think all of them you should be able to polish, polish out and have a really good looking car. And then this one, it's purple. And <laughs> I think purple vehicles are awesome. And I think that purple minivans are awesome. And I'm a big fan of the blue in the headlights. When I first moved to Japan like 12, almost 13 years ago now, this was like the fad is to put like blue in your headlights and I love that and it reminds me of when I first landed here what seems like such a long time ago now 
Okay, so there you can see it's a very low floor, very easy to get into, and when these are lowered, which is quite common, uh, it feels even lower. It's basically like driving a station wagon with uh, more headroom, but only a little bit more headroom. It is very much like right in the middle between a minivan and a station wagon. I think they really got the styling of this. I think it's even better than the next generation up. And then the next generation looks very similar to this, but then the next one after that, which just came out here in Japan, is back to regular old minivan, and they have dropped the Elysian. And so this one moved up market, and Elysian was removed, removing all of the coolness out of it, because I don't really care that much about minivans, but I do care about something that's a little bit different in the market than what the market is used to. And this definitely hit the bill. And it was a good move on Honda's part because they sold tons of these and that makes them really affordable nowadays. Minivans in general in Japan are pretty affordable because everybody in Japan has a minivan it seems. And so uh, you were able to get them at good prices because everybody seems to want to have the newest stuff. That kind of feeling is very apparent here in Japan. And these are the stock wheels. Kind of cool look to that. Not kind of, very cool look. And big wheel wells, and so yeah, 20 inch wheels actually fit in there and look cool. And cool little extra window there. Yeah, like it. Oh, and no sliding doors. This is an Odyssey thing. For the first, second, third, I think fourth generation, no sliding doors on the Odyssey. And so it has the very, very big doors. Very easy to get in. It's almost comical how big that is. But uh, on the other hand, when you have kids and you have doors like this, you're going to attack people's cards that are next to yours. And so you have to be careful with that. We have a rule in my house that kids are not allowed to open any of the doors. Even my daughter who's 12, not allowed to. Sliding door is okay for her, but nothing else. Because I don't want to, I don't want to hurt someone else. I don't want to hurt their car. Okay, so let's go over to the interior. Not much to talk about with the exterior other than the great looks chrome door handles. Interior is good. It's uh, this stage in Honda's um, life cycle, I guess. They really upped their interior game and uh, I like it very much. Uh, this and my minivan I think was well above what was available in the Alphard and the El Grand in terms of coolness of looks and just mix of technology. I mean it's a little bit outdated by today's standards but uh, it's good. This is good even though it's plastic. It has a good look to it. Same thing with here. It's like a wood look, but it's not real wood. Uh, here's leather. Probably not real leather too, but still a very good combination there. Very extreme looking. Steering wheel is cool. It has cruise control and audio functions on the steering wheel. I always use the audio functions and can't live without them. I don't use cruise control because I don't drive on the highway very often with my minivan, but uh, it's a, a nice thing to have, especially here in Japan. Seats are good looking. I can't say about the comfort of them. They look much better than the ones that I have in the Elysian. And they look like they handle the wear pretty well. Okay, steering wheel doesn't have telescoping. It only has tilt, which is a little bit strange to me. Okay, I really like the, uh, the gauges because of like the uh, backlit illumination. It has a very cool look. And if you like these, you'll like the Elysian even better because it has a cool 3D kind of uh, mirrored reflection. It's hard to explain, but take a look at it, it's really good. Notice how like the 2 and the 20 is behind there? It's like that, but even better. See, it's like 3D. It's cool. It makes you feel special when you look at that. Okay, and this is, this is also very 3D. Your screen is very far behind and then this part comes out. It's a good look. You got nice little screens everywhere, like your time and your station up there. This is all very similar to mine, very easy to use once you get used to it. Uh, this thing, um, this one is you, just your AC temperature, um, so nothing that special about it. You can also, uh, you only have a single zone, not dual zone here. Uh, set your temperature, everything's good. This one you wouldn't use because it's used for navi and telephone and stuff like that. I never use it in my car, but it's sort of like a Honda version of iDrive, I guess. Shifter, mm, 
Uh, I'm not a huge fan of, of the shifter. I think it looks nice with the, with the chrome in here, but uh, it feels weird to use. The notches are small, but then again, I'm also used to my own. And I like how these light up. That's good. And then switch yourself. You don't have uh, paddles for shifting. Okay, down here's your Navi system thing. Uh, ashtray is in here and has been used. Doesn't terribly smell like cigarettes, just a little bit inside. And then, yeah. Cup holders could be more. These are the exact same as in mine. This one folds down if you want to get through to the back. I almost never use that function, but I had before. I usually have so many things on here that if I ever do this, they'll all fall on the floor. And it's a bit of a pain to clean up in there. But these are good, nice, deep cup holders. Uh, this opens. And then there's a uh, input here for video. So you can plug in your Super Nintendo and you can actually play your Super Nintendo on there, um, which is pretty cool. You need to get a cigarette lighter adapter. I don't know how you would get that. There is no actual uh, like 100 volt, 110 volt. Oh, a cup holder in here too. <clears throat> Rear doors, okay, so this is a little bit crazy. Rear doors here, usually nobody cares, like manufacturers don't care about rear doors that much because that's where the kids sit. But here we have coolness. We have this, and I don't know how functionally good this is, but I think it's just really cool. I don't know if I would ever use it for anything or if I would just keep it closed, but I think it's cool. Same thing with this. Why does it open like that? I don't know, but it's fun and it's cool. Okay, so these seats, you can move forward and backwards, sliding function, which is good. You can give more or less leg room. Push this all the way back, and that's how much leg room that you get. And then you can set this to different levels of tilt at the same time. Uh, this, that's my current seating position, which I believe is full back. And so as you can see, lots of room there. And then you can get into the rear. Now I folded the seats in the rear down on purpose, so I can show you how to get that out. But you can see getting into the rear is, is pretty easy. But if you have a car seat here that you have to have here, then you can't get into the rear without taking that car seat out. And that was the, that was the deciding factor. So this is your extra part in the back to cover up a little hole in there if you want and let me just show you what that what I mean by that because that was a little bit cryptic this is annoying on my van and on this one that when you put the seat back up it's in the full upright position it should remember the angle of that it was at but yeah okay on to the back and I'll show you that that pit that I was talking about so a decent amount of room in the back. It is not super duper spacious, but bigger than a lot of minivans, actually. And climb in. Let's undo these. And then that goes down. That way you can kind of hide stuff in the back if you want to, or if you need everything to be flat and no holes to drop stuff in or have to fish stuff out, then that's, it's helpful to have. Before we flip up the seats here, we get the extra two seats in the back. Uh, this is a little bit weird. You get cup holder and stash box for something, I guess. On this side, you get something different. You, I mean, you get the same thing, but it comes with its own little case. Why not the same on both sides? I don't understand you, Honda. It's almost like they had two designs and they couldn't figure out which one that they wanted. This one's kind of cool that you can move this out of the way and you can have a bigger section if you want, but still, a little bit weird. All right, climb out time. Okay, so handle here. Up all the way, and you can keep it like that if you want. 
So that way you have a deeper spot to put your groceries. And very rarely do you ever use more than this much space in a trunk. And then, eh, is that not how you do it? Here we go. Up we go. Up we go. Do these go back more? No, they don't. And so that's a decent amount of space. Oh, subwoofer. Hmm. And then do you get room in there? Let's have a look. I, I probably have sat in one of those before, but not recently. So, I'm going into the back. Fairly easy for an adult to get in. I'm done. Yeah, yeah, even adults can hang out back here. And you get your own AC vents up here and AC vents up there, which are directional and have controls for how much fan speed that you get and stuff. And a decent amount of headroom here in the back. You can see my head is not quite touching the top, but I'm sitting up straight. A lot of uh, like little hatchbacks and stuff, I have to slouch down in order to, to actually fit in the back. But no, this is fine for me. I'm 178 or 510 and get out. It might be a bit hard to get out if you can't open the door this wide though. And that was one of the drawbacks of having traditional doors instead of a sliding door. Okay, cup holders and pillow for your kids when they're sleepy. Yeah, good vehicle. Very good. I think they really hit it out of the park with this one, especially in a sea of minivans that all look the same. To have something that's a little bit different, sportier, more fun to drive, decent amount of power, good looks, decent amount of room. Yeah, it's a good package all over. Okay, so there we have it. Enjoy the video. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching, everybody, and have a nice day.